need to invest in ourselves and our food. So let's call for our brother, uh, brother Evan Bafo, to give us a little uh, Greetings, brothers and sisters, and uh, welcome, all of you. Um, thank you, Bomani and David, for this wonderful platform. I've done this for years, too. And I always say that I ask you to clap for yourselves because every one of you who was left here um, in the most demeaning uh, fashion, you've come back to redeem the dignity of your ancestors. You made a full 360 uh, circle back and uh, you're all victorious and, and, and a lot of our brothers and sisters here have to understand exactly what it means when we see our brothers and sisters come back full circle. So please, seriously, give yourselves a round of applause. I am the Communications Director for Food Sovereignty Ghana. We are a civil society organization and we've been um, advocating for um, you know, healthy food in Ghana. Uh, one of our flagship uh, interests is to keep genetically modified food out of Ghana. We were started in 2013 and we've been advocating since we just turned 10 on um, the 21st of March last uh, two months ago. Uh, we've been advocating a lot, done a lot of litigation in the courts. We are currently in the Supreme Court and the High Court. We we're supposed to have had a judgment last Wednesday in the Supreme Court where we're challenging the constitu constitutionality of the Plant Variety Protection Act, which is these new laws that are being pushed on African countries by international organizations who have their own interests about how we're supposed to control our food and our food systems. So basically in a nutshell, you have these very rigid laws that are being introduced into um, developing countries where they're giving um, plant breeders and big corporations the ability to control our seeds. So for instance, uh, a breeder comes to Ghana and takes um, you know, any of our, our, our plants, takes it to their lab, tweaks it a little bit, and then comes back and says that they have now patented this plant, and now this plant is to be sold to Ghanaians, that you cannot trade this plant, but there's never a benefit sharing scheme, there's never any acknowledgement um, about who developed that variety for thousands of years, who developed our cowpea, who developed our brown rice, who developed our okru and have those people been rewarded? So when you just come to Ghana Shores, immediately turn back and try to sell it to us. Um, it's, it's almost criminal. Um, now farmers, because of these new types of laws, face uh, prison sentences if you're caught exchanging or saving or selling seeds that are patented. But then again, where does this pattern arise? And all these things are common goods, like this, the, the, the air we breathe, the sunshine, the rain. Same thing with seeds. So Food Sovereignty Ghana has been work fighting against that. It's very important that you coming back home realize the importance of food. Um, food is the basic fuel for the body. And as Dr. Asari was telling you, our bodies are the most uh, sophisticated creations our bodies are more sophisticated than these phones that, that we have here. Your eyes are more sophisticated than this, this phone that I'm holding in my hand. The number of pictures that your eyes have seen since we started this event this, this evening, um, if you were recording something on your phone from yesterday, you'd have to take your, your, your storage and put on a pen drive or a hard drive. Can you imagine how many pictures in high pixels that you, your eyes have seen since last week, and since last year, and since when you were born, for decades. So you can imagine the kind of power, the kind of engineering, the kind of storage that the eye um, can function at. And then we're not talking about your liver, your kidney, your, your, your hair. So food sovereignty is very important because we are all created by our creator, and the food that grows in the areas where we live is specifically growing there for a reason. You know, so now we've relegated all our nutritious foods to the second division and we're eating all these new noodles and uh, eating so much pizza and all this refined processed food and wondering why we're dying of colon cancer and liver cancer and kidney disease and all that. But you have to go back to what was food for us. So food sovereignty means growing and eating food that was nutritionally relevant for the African body. 
eating more alkaline grains like the millet, the sorghum, the folio that our ancestors used to eat, um, our yams, um, you know, sweet potatoes, the leaves, the greens, you know, Ghana is full of herbs. And so if we don't safeguard our food sovereignty, that's when your government can give you an excuse that because of Russia and Ukraine, it's uh, affecting the price of cassava or even things that are grown locally here. So if we're not a food sovereign people, no matter what height we reach in any endeavor of humanity, you must eat. Whether you're a scientist or a doctor or an engineer and you're hungry, you stop listening to me and you'd all leave. So food is the basic foundation. The creator actually created life so simple. We've made life so sophisticated. But you really need to be able to only grow your own food and create your own shelter. And there's a certain peace to life. And all the vocations that we do, everybody running around Accra and New York and Chicago is running around so that they can eat food. And we're training our children to go out and get these new jobs so they can also toil so they can just do what? Eat food. So we must not depart from the importance of growing your own food. And they say, growing your own food is like printing your own money. So visit our site. We have a Facebook page, Food Sovereignty Ghana, if you look on, on Facebook. We also have a website, www.foodsovereignty.ghana.org. Um, support us. Most of the, the, the money is on the other side with Bill Gates and everything that they're doing. But if Africans don't stand up um, to safeguard our culture, you have things like UNESCO recognizing the pyramids and you know different um, tourist sites as World Heritage sites. But the history that we have in our seeds is something we all need to protect. And we need to put the value on it. So if you don't realize that, then you know there's nothing else uh, left to fight for. And I'm telling you, the day that African farmers have to buy seeds from a company, no longer have them in their barn, that's the day that the, the takeover is complete. And it's happening. If you go to the north, you find farmers who travel to buy seeds from a store, and they no longer have seeds hanging in their barn, drying the smoke room. And all the biodiversity we used to have is getting lost. We're getting a very uniform type of food. If you look at the color of maize in Mexico, it looks like a cartoon. It has red, green, purple, orange, yellow, um, you know, uh, ears of corn. Today you see maize is just only yellow. You can't tell me that that yellow maize has the same nutritional value as this rainbow colored maize. And so we need to protect our biodiversity all the foods that our ancestors ate that gave them the strength to do what we've been able to do, we will not be able to do if we continue on the trajectory. And you can see it happening now. So now we have a child cancer ward at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. We have child diabetes and all these things that we never used to have. That's because of the way we're, growing, where we're eating and uh, growing our food. And there's a strong lobby coming from outside to change the way we live and we should resist it. So long live Ghana, long live food sovereignty. Thank you very much. Right. It was a great, great uh, family reunion, great conference. And uh, we're going to let you ask questions after the last speakers come on board. Um,